So, no, so here we go. So which one is easier, right? Here's my question for you. Which one of these is easier? Having a digital record on your phone, because I carry this with me everywhere I go, it has photos of my kids on it, it has access to my banking records on it, but it also has my vaccine record. Or do I have to carry around this flimsy card everywhere I go? Which one of these is more convenient and which one of these is an, and which one is an option? They're both an option. I can carry this on me everywhere I go if I want. I could, or I could keep this on my phone. What the governor is providing, it is an option. The governor is providing only an option for people to carry their digital health record on them. That's all this is. And as far as the data question goes, the state of Connecticut owns the data. And it, it, we are not in the business of sharing or selling information to make money. That is not how we operate. As far as any contracts, any information on this, every one of you has that in your inbox right now from our administration. So all of you have that information from us. Why not share this information with legislators? We, we absolutely do, all the time. We share, we share everything with legislators all the time. Any, any inclination that we are not discussing things with members of the General Assembly is simply false. You know, maybe Representative Candelora isn't happy to the extent that we do it, but there are separate branches of government. There are separate powers that are separate for a reason. And that's the way the Constitution laid it out. You know, when the governor uh, walks down the street, he doesn't have to let Representative Candelora know about it. In the same way, when we're providing an option for residents to do one thing or another without any requirement, these are things under the governor's ex executive powers, with or without an emergency. And can you say exactly that your understanding is that within this contract that no information was sold to third party What I'm saying is that the data as it relates to vaccinations is something that goes back years in the state of Connecticut, long before COVID-19. You know, children have been required to get vaccinations. By the way, re requirements that have been fought by Representative Candelora and his caucus going back years now. And so they have a record right now of fighting information when it comes to people having access to or being able to prove a vaccine record. They've, they're already on the record with that. But additionally, this is something that goes back. And so the state of Connecticut is not in the business of selling information. And it's explicit in the agreement, which you have in your email, that this is not something that the state of Connecticut is selling in any way, shape, or form. This is something that's under lock and key. But I also remind, with whether you download an app, all right, if you download any app on your phone, whether it's to purchase food to go, whether it's a banking app, those people are tracking your activity. That is what they are doing. That is not what this is. And any suggestion to the contrary is simply a lie. The governor, there is, Governor Lamont has been unbelievably clear. There is no plan for a new set of mandates, period, stop. So what are the, aside from the specific complaints about the vaccination cards, uh, Representative Candelora complains that the administration has not been proactive on the, on the broader question of transparency. And mm -hmm. he said uh, certain other states, there are contracts that are routinely posted, mm -hmm. So first, is, so so first, is, is there room for on that area? no. So so first of all, um, executed state contracts are already posted online on a regular basis. You can find them immediately. State Comptroller Lembo is a legacy of that. We celebrated it last week when we announced uh, the person who's going to replace I me. Mean, he he set up this incredible standard when it comes to providing the public information. Not only do we welcome that, but we embrace it. And we've provided every single record under the sun. And I, once again, I'll remind the information relating to this, probably have to get it to you, but I can get it to you, I can forward it to you right now, relating to this agreement, readily available, I'll send it to you right now, without even having to ask for it. But also, um, you know, there was criticism of screen and stay. This morning, we, we happened to put out a press release with a full data accounting of who's utilizing the screen and stay program. You know, whether it happened on a Wednesday or a Friday, I, I, I don't know what the difference is there, but we've provided a full accounting with a full report and a full survey as it relates to the unbelievably successful screen and stay program. As it relates to that, I'm going to take issue with something Representative Candelora said. He said that he has a superintendent in his district saying that it's been a waste of his time to deal with the screen and stay program and instead needs to deal with administrative matters. I find that beyond the pale. The most important thing is keeping students in school. And if you're spending an extra amount of time to keep kids in school, 
then that's part of your job. And that's something that Governor Ned Lamont views as an absolute priority. We need to be keeping kids in school as those places have a clear mental health and physical health benefit. And to say that this has been an inconvenience to keep kids in school is not something the governor supports. Matt, you said that the state of Connecticut is not in the I'm not familiar. I don't know. I'm not. I, I'm, I just. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that it has. I, I just don't know. I just don't know off the top of my head. Yes. Well, why? Why? why I, I mentioned that a, a moment ago. If you download an app, whether it's for a food delivery, whether it's for online banking, whether it's to shop, right? When you download that app and you click through, what you're doing is you are giving that app permission to go through everything on your phone. That's what you're doing in a lot of ways. And they're gonna track your activity. That's how these things work. However, they're, however, where the fear mongering and the irresponsibility that's going on here is relating to an optional digital health record that goes in your digital wallet on your phone. That's relating to a QR code. That is not the same thing in any way, shape or form. So, what, so my point there is, you know, if, if we need to have a uh, discussion about how data works and how um, information is and is not shared, especially as it relates to state agreements, state contracts that deliberately and expressly lay out that that information is protected and secured. We're happy to have that conversation. No one. I'm, I'm not aware of anybody asking. For, oh wait. Oh, oh wait. Are you talking about the data? Or are you talking about the app? Oh no, Sorry. Sorry. The digital health record. I mean. We're, we're already seeing that the, you already need to require vaccination at large venues in Connecticut. There are some large venues already in the state. I believe the Bushnell is one of them, other theaters, and there are even already some other restaurants that have already said you have to have vaccination requirement. I mean, we're aware of what Scott Dolch said. We're aware of that. But to provide an extra tool that is an option, that is not a flimsy paper card, is something that is uh, just simply non-controversial. Um, and... Um, but you're also even seeing there are private businesses that require a mask, right? Um, both in the state and out of the state of Connecticut. So what we're providing is flexibility for residents to have easy access to their digital health record without any kind of mandate, without any kind of additional restriction on businesses, which we've been clear about is not coming down the line anytime soon. I believe the way it works is you need to have a QR code, QR code reader. I don't know whether that's a physical piece of equipment or if it's an app. Uh, I mean, the fact is, all you need to do right now is just scan using the phone, uh, rather the, uh, the camera function on your phone, whether it's an Android device or an Apple device or any other. Um, I believe it, that's, that, I, I'm not an expert in the technology per se, but I believe it's just as simple as scanning a QR code utilizing um, uh, a camera that can just scan it. So, so there is a there is a vaccine passport mandate in the state of New York, where they are mandating vaccination proof in some places. Governor Ned Lamont is not mandating proof of vaccination to get into any business. Period. Stop. That is the difference. But a business could. Decide. A business could, of course. Any business could. The same way a business could say, you can't come into my museum without wearing a mask. The same way a college can say, you have to be vaccinated. Right. Um, and for those kids, should they be following? Their, should they be carrying around their card, or should they be able to have it on their phone with convenience? Uh, yeah, Christine. It's hard. It's hard to hear you. So I apologize. It's just a yes or no. It's a it's no. There's no data sharing. It's a yes or no. Whether the vaccine record says you're vaccinated or not. That's it. It's not. It's not sharing where you went. It's not sharing uh, access to anything else on your device. It just says yes, I'm vaccinated. No, you're not. Or, or, or it's not working. But any QR code reader could read it. No, no. It shares. It is explicit. As a matter of fact, it explicitly says it is your COVID-19 record. It's explicit. Okay. Correct. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool.